Hello, and welcome to the next episode of Making Mannequin Heads into Planters! Yay! You're here. I'm here. The guys are here. The gang's all here. Say hi, Lee. Hi. Say hi, Larry. Hi. There we are. Everybody, all the gang's here. Um, Lee's working on block prints. Larry's working on a uh, puzzle. And we are going to be working on Dragon Head. Bum, 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 bum or a dead head, or white walker head, I don't know what to call it yet, but, or spiky head, we already got spikes, so this is fin head, <laughs> we'll figure it out, um, it's fun that I name them, I like naming them, so what we've done so far is working in the purple, and I darkened the purple a little bit with the blue, uh, staying in the palette of the blue palettes, and working toward getting this, this ish, Conceptually, this guy does amazingly beautiful work, and uh, I like how he's got these swooping lines on the sides and then the brow lines. And then, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to draw in more of them with my marker so that I get good, good reference points, and then um, I'm going to do those in with the paint. And why am I just using the purple? Well, the purple for right now is the low, the lows, which means the um, in-between crevices. And in-between crevices, I guess? In-between in, in ridges, sorry. And um, so it's going to be the low part. And then we'll highlight to make the higher part. So I want this pretty parallel. So I'm going to draw this looking at the other side comes from here, that's my reference point there, comes underneath the cheekbone, so I'm making marks, see? And then it comes into here. The second one comes down to here, a little bit further, and then comes parallel to this one, up and then through and further back. So this one comes in here, swoops, and comes down. This one comes here, oops, not very parallel. And there, I'm gonna put one in partially, I'm going to put another line, bringing it here, up and in, narrow, and then to the lip, another one coming from further down and into the lip. My lip is essentially, lips are essentially here, so I want it to go into the lips. I'm not going to actually do lips on this guy. Uh, I will at the very, very end, so I can bring another one here. This one stops there, I'll bring another one here. And then these lines are gonna be coming down. Very swoopy, very angled. I'm gonna do here. Oops. Oh, wait. Oh, I see what I did. I'm gonna come down and around. I'm going to come down, 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 and up. And connect those. This comes further out. There. I like that, actually. That's pretty cool. Bring these two together. This one goes out. And I like it that this is different on this side. There you go. So then I'm going to bring another line from back here. It's going to be paralleling. And then there, into the lips. Then I want the lips to go the other way, so I'm going to want lines to come down there. Swoop. Swoop. And then just coming down, creating this space. And just drag them out. Oh, that's pretty cool. There we go. That's what I want. He, <laughs> that's good. That works really, really well. Then we'll figure out another one here, up and around. Got four there. Got four or five there. That's good. Balanced. Um, and 
I've got an extra line in here. That's where that is. Bringing it down and then out. There we go. So I'm going to put these in with the purple and run from side to side as I feel the need. I'm actually going to use the shorter bristle brush again. This bristle brush, somebody trimmed it down, which is very cool. So I'm just putting in, just bringing in purple for those low areas. And then what I'll do is I'll bring in lighter colors to highlight in between, which I already have some highlighting in between. So this can be not necessarily as, I don't need to have like perfect blending like I would normally because it is going outside. And in some areas, what's cool, kind of cool is with that black marker, it's actually defining some of my lines already a little bit lower I don't even need black paint. So that's actually major bonus right now. Because um, I was debating on bringing black paint in, but I don't need to with this black marker being underneath. Haha, -ha! new approach, look at that. All right, let's 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 see what we just discovered. If I leave the black paint, or the purple paint over the black marker a little bit lighter, you can still see that really low area and it's almost like I'm blending black paint, but it's marker. It is a permanent marker uh, that I used on it. And um, there we go. And that is actually making a cool effect. Unexpected, love that discovery. This little very fine well, it's not really fine. I don't know how you describe it. Um, firm, bristly brush. Somebody trimmed it down. Is working nicely to put, bring in a lot of a lot of color. So I think Lee finished up his block printing because he just got up and left. And um, so now I'll come down to the implied lips. I'm not. I don't. I think I'm really not going to do lips. I think I'm just going to leave it a space in between the lines um, and not like do the typical define these are lips. It'll just be the absence of, it'll be the undercolor that we suddenly can see. And I kind of, I really like that idea. That's not where I was going to go with it originally, but if I look at things more, so I've got one line, right? But I don't necessarily have rosy red lips that I need to sculpt or that I need to define with paint or make sort of give the feeling of visual visually. So there we go. All right, keep going with these lines. Ooh, ah, poop. All right, I don't want, oh, I just got purple on it. Crap got it in a spot that I really don't want it. So what do I do? Because I had it on my pinky. Because you notice when I do this kind of line work, I put my pinky down. Ha ha! There we go. Take a paper, paper towel, wet it. And because it's permanent marker, pulls the paint right off. Love it, love it, love it. So, but I use my pinky, stabilize on the, on the actual piece. And you can do this on three-dimensional stuff, or you can do it on um, um, canvas as well. You'll see painters. I mean, it's just the typical way of doing it. But if you weren't sure if you know that's what you do, then you just try out your different ways of doing it and figure out what works for you. But that is one thing to try out is to. Um, Put that pinky down, gives you a very much more stable hand. So I used to try to do it where um, I was always off. There are some paint techniques where you're always off of, of the, the medium and you do it from the air. Well, I don't work that well that way. My hand is not that stable. Not, you know, it's, I just, I, that becomes messy to me. You'll get a better flow if you do that at times. Um, but for the most part, like if I'm dragging a long distance, like with a marker, if I don't have my pinky down on there, 
or any finger, then I can sort of just do a longer, faster drag, which will give you a better line than fiddly little drags. But when I'm painting and doing this with this kind of thing, I, um, I want to pre stay pretty stable because it is actually on the sculpt creep, which even though I've got the, the base layer, if you look at a previous episode, a couple of episodes ago, I did a sort of undercoat to seal, not only to seal the, the sculpt creep, but to um, make it easier to do fine painting on the sculpt creep. If I were to try to do this directly on the sculpt creep, it would take me a heck of a lot longer than it does this way because so what I just did was I just pulled some of the regular purple that I have out, put it over to the side, take the blue, put it in with it, and it actually makes the purple darker. Um, there we go. There we go. And um, so, yeah, so do whatever you need to do to, to get whatever kind of lines. So now what I'm doing is I've got my arm because I can't reach pinky wise down. It's like a real stretch awkward because of where this line is. So now my elbow, or not my elbow, but my forearm is stabilized against the actual table. It may seem like something obvious, but if you're in a position that that's not gonna work, then um, try whatever you can. Give yourself the most comfortable position to be in while you're painting. Uh, if you can, and then uh, also try to keep your stability. Um, so that, like, like I said, my hands are not very stable, or not stable, they're not very steady. So I have to always um, be sort of set against something else to, to get my hands more steady and more accurate. The um, paint that I'm putting right on, on right now is acrylic. And here we go, going around the lips. So my absence of actual lips is going to be just shading in the middle, I think. And not terribly defined space. Take the paint heavy on the brush Put it down, drag it. As it gets to the base, you'll see me rolling my brush. That means I'm taking it off of the bottom part of the bristles, dragging, rolling and dragging toward me. It leaves behind the paint and then I can dab and put it back on the tip of my brush. So, there we go. What you'll find is that if you start at one end and then drag, if I drag out like that, the end of my brush stroke is going to be more of a taper, right? And if I start, and this may seem very obvious too, but and I apologize if you're getting bored with what I'm saying, but uh, too bad, you're, it's your boredom. Uh, <laughs> I'm still gonna say it. If I pull from here, it's gonna be glop and then lighter, glop, lighter, right? Heavy light. So you want to think about the direction that you're, you, the, the end that, or the place that you're starting your, your um, stroke, and what direction you're going in. Uh, it may seem very obvious, but maybe you never thought of it consciously until you, until now. So in, when I teach voice or languages, I voice it's most applicable. Um, voice lessons. I knew a lot of singers at conservatory and um, college who just knew how to sing. They were like excellent, just organically really good singers, great voices, right? but they could never tell you what they did in order to be able to do that. So then what happens is when they have a cold, when they have something happen, 
that impacts their voice, um, they don't know how to fix it because they always just sort of sang before. And they didn't, and a lot of them, when they got to college, would have all these issues because, oh my gosh, you know, and they'd be like totally freaked out that if they lose their voice or if they have a cold, if they have allergies, because allergies are huge in Kansas City. My allergies were worse than they've ever been on the East Coast when I was living in Kansas City. Air quality is just very challenging. So they didn't know how to fix it because they never were taught. Their teacher just kind of went, oh, good, you know how to sing. I'm going to teach you how to interpret song really well. Never checking in with them to see if they knew what they were doing in order to create that glorious, beautiful sound. And if you don't know what you're doing, you can't fix it when it doesn't do it. I mean, logical, right? Makes sense? Yeah, I figured that out really early on. Because my allergies are so bad, I and I had a teacher who, while an excellent, amazing teacher at how to craft song, technique was not the right tech, vocal technique for me. Um, it actually was fine at first, and then it just degraded my voice uh, because there's too much pressure, and it just my voice was too weighed down for the what my actual physical apparatus is, my physiology. So when things wouldn't work, I didn't know how to fix them. I didn't know solutions because I didn't know what I was doing in the first place because I wasn't taught to be conscious of, did you feel that? No. Okay, so do it again and see if you feel a difference. Where is it hitting you? What is it doing? What's happening physically while you're singing? Because singing is a doing thing, right? So if you're not paying attention to what you're doing physically and under, and trying to at least understand it or having techniques to explore it, then you can't fix it ever. And you don't want to have to be going back to, and maybe this is why some teachers do it, so you do have to go back to them, to an instructor to say, EGADS, I'm broken, please fix me. Uh, you need to be able to fix yourself. So my thing became and is, I want my singers, my singers to know how to fix themselves. I don't want them to need me. I don't want them to be like, I don't have a voice and I have zero way to fix myself. Uh, that is not my goal. My goal is for them to go, oh crap, this is happening. I have this technique to explore solutions and for them to fix themselves, um, or at least to be able to try to figure out what the hell is going on with their voice. Because it, our instruments are our bodies. It's your entire body. So if you're not breathing correctly because your breathing is crap or whatever, you gotta be able to figure that out yourself. All right, good. So we're in a good place. The lines are coming up nicely. Um, I'm liking that. So now I'm going to come in with a lighter color and um, that we'll do the, the ribs and everything like that later. But so I have a ton of purple on here. Good Lord, I put down a lot of purple. So what am I going to do with the purple? I have so much purple and I don't want to waste this paint. All right, let's think about this, folks. Let's do some shading all the way around. All right, got purple. I want to dilute it so that I can blend it with the dry paint underneath. So in acrylic, if you're working wet on dry, um, it's harder than working wet on wet. And the challenge with acrylic compared to other types of paint is that it dries very fast. So just like with the sculpt creep, you have a very limited time period to be able to work wet on wet. Um, so one of the techniques that I use to be able to work wet on dry, if I want to be blending, is to really thin out your paint. So if I'm doing shading after everything is dry, which I'm doing right now, I'm going to specifically pick a light source. So have you ever thought about that? So where's my light coming from? 
my light source typically is here uh, from the top so that when you're looking at it, it's blending so that the sun is here and the shadows are therefore on the bottom. It's just sort of one of my defaults. You could actually, much better artists than I, will have, will be able to incorporate multiple light sources, which to me is just freaking amazing and so cool. Um, blend that down with my finger. So that's, that's my technique for doing it right there to get rid of hard lines. You can also take a secondary brush that's just water, excuse me, and take those edges and blend them out with the water. What it does is it makes the, it thins that paint around the edges while you're not adding more. So you wanna keep that secondary brush. I've got paper towel, put it on there and I wanna put it on wet and then I want to drag it with dry. Dry it out, blend it out. What it does is it becomes a blush of color around the edges. And then you can use your fingers just to blend it in. So you see this one work really well. Let's put that closer. It's just shaded at the bottom. I'm gonna bring in a couple more shades of shades of purple to do it, but this is the first step for it. So the back side is in shadow, bottom and back. Take some water, because I put it on pretty heavy around those edges. Ooh, and I better drip. And that's one of your challenges is not to have too much water like I just did. You definitely want water. So what am I gonna do to take that off? To wet my paper towel and sponge that off because I actually like the color that I have on the back there and I'm not gonna mess with it. So I've got that on, take my wet, take my finger, because it's a rough surface, it actually works really well with my finger I'm finding, and then just blend it out. See, it looks much better. It's more of a smudgy smudgy instead of a, and there's a you know, bunch of color on there. Now you also want to make sure that you have shadow below the item. So it can't just be the item is, or the that particular, oh, look at that, look at underneath. Totally missed something. Pick it up and you'll see. So it doesn't just have shading underneath here because I don't have up light. So I do want to, with my other brush, put on a little bit of paint at the base of these that will then, I will wet and get some of that water off so that I'm not dripping and then just pull it down and around, finger, blend, blend, my dear, blend. And then it incorporates it into the rest of the head, just like when we were working with the actual sculpt creep, where got it wet, blend it down and out, right? Blend, blend, blend. So that makes it so that it becomes more part of the entire thing. And with good light, I can actually do better a blending. Because that paint underneath is completely dry. So let's work on this guy over here. I'm gonna use my clean off my wet brush. Use my dry brush. I mean my um my very saturated brush. Make sure it's not to be diluted, there we go, diluted, almost like a watercolor feel to it. Bring that shading in. Make sure it sort of matches what I'm doing on the other side so I don't go totally wonky. Keep my light source in one place mentally and then work that paint blending into the paint that's under there that's already dry, giving it more of a blush or a a light shading than hard lines, right? That's what we're going for. And that's what my finger does right there. Now I wanna remember what I just talked about. I wanna be shading underneath as well. Under and on this case, in this case, back a little bit. Under and back. Doesn't need to be perfect. Doesn't need to be like super smooth, beautiful. It just needs to be non-chunky. That's actually a really good word is. 
So when I look at it from all sides, so this is sculpture. This is three dimensional art, right? So my three dimensional art needs to be three dimensional. And um, so you got to look at it from more than just like the front. You got to look at it from the sides. You got to look at it from the back. You got to look at it from the bottom. Um, so turn it around, manipulate it visually. And um, if you're used to using or working with two dimensional art, you don't do this. And it's just not something you do. So if my light is coming from the front, these are going to be highlighted through here, right? Highlighted, highlighted. The darker parts are going to be the bottom. So I want to put in a blush. This is dry. And this is dry. So I'm good to go with what I just put on. But here I'm going to use my purple, which is my shading, right? Very diluted. Sorry about the jump there. Suddenly, uh, my phone actually ran out of memory weirdly enough and uh it cut me off so um you didn't miss really anything except for like two minutes of me painting and talking uh saying the same thing over and over again so here we are this is the start to the face face is pretty cool and then i'll be doing um sort of scales around the back as the plan and then working with highlighting and uh then we will be wrapping this one up. Um, so I may bring these lines up and in. We'll see what I end up doing. I don't think so. Um, so that's it for today. Um, we're at, actually, I've got a few more minutes. Um, let's, so I lied. Let's do just a few more minutes, but let's start with, so I've got all my um, shading done. So let's start with a little bit of highlighting. I hate to leave all of this paint unused but it is what it is. So I am going to pull in my lighter paint and do real bright, whoopsies, this is way too big of a brush for it. Let's grab one of my smaller brushes that I was using before, or both of them, clean them off. They've been sitting in the water, so boom, they're clean. And I'm going to highlight ridges throughout I'm using really light what is this called this is the oh this is my coastal waters it's a very um uh translucent -y, thin whatever you call it um almost like a turquoise actually you know what maybe i'll blend it in with the turquoise get a multi-blend and just work it that way there we go oh it works nicely and get it with some white, blend it over at the side, pull that over so you can see what I'm doing. Oh, I'm off camera. Hold on. I'm doing it. Do, 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 do. Here we go. Nice highlights. Blend it out. You can wet it to blend it. I don't want the down the bottom sides highlighted. I want the top edges highlighted. And I want them strongly highlighted. There we go. Nice light strokes to blend it down. My base coat is actually exactly where I want it and what I want it. So I'll take the next ridge line, get a little bit lighter over here. My undercoat is actually already nice and light. Get the top edge, because where is my light source, right? Just keep that in mind. And here we go. Now with a drier brush, try to brush it down to blend it in. You can use wet or dry. This seems to be working fine with the, with the dryer. Wet it a little bit, see how that does. It seems to be pulling too much of the paint down um, when I wet it. So apparently wetting works really well with, I'm finding out, with dark, but with light, it seems to be not blending as well. So I want a drier brush with it because uh, it's pulling way too much down for blending. Could also just be the actual type of paint. 
I don't think there we go. Let's see my lines up here. So let's keep on going a little bit here. Lines are going to be on the tips of the lines and on the top sides. There we go. Uh, do, do, do. Top edges. Don't want it to be like, I am highlighted and then I am highlighted. Something in between, right? There we go. I want to fix this up and through here. Get this blended in to the rest of it around it. But I was um, when I was painting inside the the top, I got I splopped a bunch of um, paint out, <laughs> and it made a mess. Make sure the top rim is nice and light all the way around. There we go. Keep going around. And we're going to end at just a couple minutes here. There we go. Put that on. I think I'm going to try. I'm going to try a toothbrush. Let's one dry brush because before I did one wet brush and then yeah that works really well one dry brush dryish brush to soften and blend one where I'm applying the paint so there you go there's another option for you apply that paint with one brush with the lights and bring it down in the back Drop that, dry off a dry one, and then blend it down so it doesn't have so so much paint on it. That works really, really, really well. There we go. With this horn. Dry brush it to blend. Beautiful look at there. All right, good. Bridge of the nose. Blend it out on the edges. Real bright in here. We'll work between those later. For right now, there'll be less lines than they will be just bottoms of creases, which is what we need. There we go. Cool. Blend that where needed. And we're softening those lower areas. And that's going to work beautifully. You can already see the difference. I'm just getting rid of those hard, hard edges. making them feel more like shadow. This is the dry brush that I came back with for blending. There, you can already see in that center section, and I'm gonna be done for today. In that center section of the head, how it softened those lines a little bit. 
And then what I can do is after I'm done with that, I'll come back with the multi multiple colors of blue and um, then in through here and in through here, all the colors will come, all the, not colors, but so I guess colors of blue. Um, and then it'll be less severe under here because I'll do some more shades of blue than just purple. And, but the ridges are doing well. They'll look great. And then what I can do is, like I said, I plan to, I've got so much paint out here. This is such a bummer. I'm actually going to wrap this with, with uh, cellophane or whatever you call it. Plastic wrap. See if I can keep some of this from drying out. Um, so lesson learned. I'm not Bob Ross. I'm not going to do a whole painting in a sitting. <laughs> so don't put out so much freaking paint that I'm going to waste my paint. Uh, oh, actually, you know, I can scoop it back in. I'll be scooping it back in my, my bottle. Since they're not squeezed things, I can actually put them back in my paint pots. I'll do that. So I hope you have a wonderful day. And we will work on this more in the next episodes. And then we will work on Tallhead, who will be... We don't know where we're going with her. I have no clue. That may be the one where I do some funky add-on uh, stuff with different materials. There have been a couple suggestions of what to use um, as like bark or uh, I did the shells with the merman and um, Marvin the I, I don't remember what his name is now. I think it was Marvin the merman, whatever the merman was. And then um, use other materials to add on to her since she's got so much to going on that will work well. So I hope you have a wonderful day. Take a deep breath in. Big breath out. Oh, that felt good. All right, now approach the world in a little different perspective and uh, put more love out in the world. There's not enough love in the world. Thank you, Sir Elton John. It is a mantra now for me. And um, I love Terry's, a friend of Terry, my sister Terry, um, she mentioned in a comment that, you know, allow yourself grace or give yourself grace. And which to me says, give myself room to make mistakes, to blunder, learn from them, um, and not be so hard on myself all the time. Hard to do, but definitely a good endeavor. Good, uh, good idea to work toward that, right? Who knows? Maybe someday I'll actually relax about myself. <laughs> I am pretty relaxed about myself compared to other people that I know, that's for sure. So I allow myself a lot more room than a lot of other people I know in certain things. Um, so I hope you have a wonderful day and enjoy it. If it's a beautiful day, we're uh, coming into, we're in fall. All the leaves are off at this point. We just got past Halloween, just so you know our timing. And there's lots of fun things to do this time of year. It's a gorgeous time of year. So whatever time of year that you're watching this, uh, and whatever year you're watching this, I hope you take advantage of how beautiful life can be. All right. Bye.